Hey, Steve Miani here at High Octane Classics in Auburn, Massachusetts with a high octane walk around of a 1972 Dodge Challenger Rally. Now, we all know that the Dodge Challenger was Dodge's answer to the Ford Mustang. It arrived in 1970, a full six years after Mustang debuted on the scene. But a lot of people say that Dodge Challenger really got it right, especially in 70 and 71 when the Hemi and the 446 pack could be had in a Challenger RT. Uh, just about as cool as a Hemi could. About 1972, things got a little different. Here's the thing. There was a big insurance crackdown, the Clean Air Act, unleaded fuel. These things were all conspiring to kill the Hemi, the big block. Even the 383 was gone in 72. So from 1972 onward, challengers were strictly about small blocks or the six-cylinder. But here's the good thing. This one here is an actual rally, which means it's the high-performance model, and it has the 344 barrel under the hood. We'll get to that in a second. Now the amazing thing about Dodge Challenger is that the first generation, 1970 through 74, about 153,000 were built, which is a pretty good number. But check this out. The new Challenger, the LC family that we have now that we all know and love, since 2008, 600,000 of them have been built and growing. Hellcats, Scat Packs, are the SRTs, so 600,000 modern challengers and about 70% of those Hemi-powered, no joke. So it's kind of cool. The originals here, you know, I used to think they'd never make a car like this ever again. Well, the new Challenger are, are pretty cool, but again, 153,000 of this. Now here's the deal, 1972, a total of 26,299 challenges were built, but of them, only 6,902 were rallies. Now what does rally mean? Well, in addition to the hood, and the wheels. You also got this sort of you know, fender scoop effect right here, seen only on rally. Dual sport mirrors, again, seen only on rally. Optional on lesser challengers, but again, standard on rally. And once again, the big, uh, you know, 14 by, uh, by six rally wheels. And again, the rally arrived in 1972 as a replacement for the RT. A Challenger RT was retired after 71, and again, the Challenger rally took over. And the idea behind uh, RT was road and track, and that meant 383 power, or 340, or 440, or Hemi. But by 72, the term rally implied maybe a more live, small block powered road racer as opposed to a drag strip killer, which is kind of what these cars became. But 1972 was the first year for this new taillight effect here. This interesting sort of uh, uh, angled taillights, the blacked out panel here. Again, 1972 new treatment, but again, part of rally also was the uh, quad tip exhaust through the valance right here. A, a throwback to 1971 with the Hemi and the six pack, but again, rallies had this as standard equipment at the back. Now this one here presents in Petty Blue, which of course Richard Petty in 1972 was, was killing it in NASCAR uh, with his Petty Blue STP chargers. And this kind of pays tribute to that. This is also known as Corporate Blue, but another thing that all challengers had, all rallies had, was this really cool flip top gas filler right here. We put the little button down like that and opens it up and it's very cool. And first, this, this idea was also seen on the Dodge Charger in 1968, 69, and 70, but also on challengers with muscle engines under the hood like like the rally now speaking of that uh, that muscle engine let's pop the hood and check out what 344 barrel actually means before we open the hood let's have a look at the grill 1972 was a whole new design for challenger and the sunken grill of 1970 71 was replaced by the some people call this the frown and uh, really menacing and sinister the blackout effect inside of here uh, but again, the hood itself, this dual snorkel power dome hood was standard fare only on RTs in 70 and 71. And of course, for 72, only the rally muscle version got this hood. But here's the irony. These scoops right here never did anything. Uh, there's some evidence underneath the hood to indicate that it's possible. They were thinking about a cold air system, but these things are always blocked off. Uh, and again, if there was ever a cold air system, it was only in prototype form, never made it to production. Oh well, it looks cool anyway. Let's take a peek under the hood here. And... Gotta find that. Here we go. And there it is, the 344 barrel. Now the 340 arrived in 1968, 275 horsepower, 240 by 1972. But here's the thing, that was a net horsepower rating. This is a very potent engine, at least 300 real world horsepower right here. It's still very stock in some ways, cast iron, uh, intake manifold, a small four-bailer Holly, 
and steel tubing headers, but otherwise largely in stock condition. And that's fine. Again, just about uh, probably good 250 horsepower, something like that, maybe even 300 at this point in time, in gross horsepower. And uh, this one here does the power disc brakes, which are part of the rally package, front disc brakes. This one does have power steering and uh, the Chrysler alternator, big cross flow radiator, which of course is Chrysler stuff right there. But here's the beauty right here. Here's the fender tag, which says E55 right there. That's the 340 engine. D34 is the heavy duty torque flight. JS23 is the Challenger Rally. JH would be a regular Challenger. So it's a real 340, and of course, H in the fifth spot, it's a 340 car. And again, there were only 6,902 Challenger Rallies built in 1972. And 1973 would bring, well, bumper spacers, and uh, as, as the government got into the five mile per hour crash bumper stuff, big old bumper blocks and stuff. So 72 is a, still a very pure example of Challenger styling before it got a little more watered down for 73 and 4. Uh, let's look inside this one. Inside this 72 Challenger 340 Rally, we of course have the Torque Flight automatic right here, but not just any Torque Flight, the console and the slapstick. See the word slapstick right there? What that means is you can actually put this in first gear, hit the thing into second, and then into drive. It'll actually have a, a bit of a detente built in thanks to the ratchet mechanism. So again, slapstick was a, a hangover from the days of the RT when people would drag race their challengers and keep it in gear for as long as they wanted until they moved this manually. Kind of cool. Of course, the high back bucket seat standard in all challengers. There was a possible bench in some of these, but this has got the buckets, which is what you want. And of course, the uh, column shifter, not seen here. You could get a torque flight or not a manual transmission up here, but this again has the proper center console with the shifter on the floor like a proper uh, rally should. And speaking of rally, the gauges here, yep, still has the 150 speedometer in the left-hand hole, and of course the uh, tachometer in the middle. All of that baked into the rally package, which was uh, what this car was born as, thanks to that JS23 VIN. Now, one thing about Challenger then as now is the back seat, or I would say lack of, but look at this. The back seat in this is it's fairly narrow. And uh, there's some room back here, but nobody's really fooling themselves. You don't buy a Challenger if you have a family of five because the back seat, well, you better be, you know, seven years old or younger to fit back here. But again, the in inside of this thing is uh, very original. And uh, this is how Chrysler made them in 1972, right down to the one-piece plastic door panels, which uh, in their day were very modern to look at. Let's take a peek at the back of this machine. While the back seat of the Challenger might not be great for a growing family, they actually are capable of being useful on a daily basis. Here's why. The trunk on these cars is fairly large. Let's take a peek. And yeah, I mean, you can certainly get a few suitcases in here with no problem, lots of groceries. So, I mean, the Challenger was really an, an easy daily driver car. In fact, Camaro and Mustang also had similarly sized trunks. So these were pony cars, but you could drive them every day. And this one has a really nice trunk, the uh, correct sort of houndstooth pattern rubber floor mat on the trunk. Somebody's added some Dynamat, this stuff right here, which is an adhesive backed insulation for sound and temperature, kind of a nice thing, but a good solid quarter panel on this one, but again, uh, the Dodge Challenger is certainly capable of being driven every day, as is the new one. In fact, something about the new Challenger, the 2008 to 2023, is that they truly are five passenger cars. Uh, you can get two in the front, you can get three in the back. I've actually sat in the back of a modern Challenger. It's not that bad. I wouldn't want to do it for too long, but try that in a Mustang or a Camaro today and it ain't going to happen. So the Challenger of today and back then was truly a five-seater if you really wanted it. So Dodge Challenger, this is the car that you bought if you'd like a Mustang or Camaro, but you're really a Dodge guy. Challenger was your car. And this one here being a rally is a special piece. V8 only in rally land, heavy duty suspension, and this one has the optional E55 340 engine, as strong as things got in 1972. And that's not saying bad things. These had good power, would probably run a, a low 15 second quarter mile, would totally get your attention. So a fun car. If you want a Mustang, but you're a Dodge guy, Get yourself a Challenger. If you like what you've seen in this video, keep in mind that most of the vehicles shown on the High Octane Classics YouTube channel are available for purchase for as little as 10% down. And even though High Octane Classics is located in Auburn, Massachusetts, we can deliver these cars anywhere on the planet. And we do consider trades. So if you have a motorcycle, another classic, an exotic, you name it, we can certainly consider it as a possible trade toward the vehicle you want to buy. To learn more about these vehicles, check them out on the High Octane Classics 
website or call 508-859-4515. Thank <laughs> you.